preparing speeches. I'm going to talk about how to prepare speeches for your debate. And um, first of all, um, you should by now have two proposals, one proposal which you are for, and please think about your best, what's your best argument for? And um, what's the best argument against your proposal? You should also have a proposal that you're debating against. And again, uh, what's the best argument that you have against? And um, what is the best argument for? Uh, think about these questions. Think about your two proposals. And um, I wonder uh, which proposal, which of your two proposals do you want to debate first? Um, is that the for proposal or the against proposal? And um, which part do you want to do? So the debate has four different parts. You probably have four people in your team. So which part will each person do in the debate? Um, there's the first speech, the attack speech, the defense speech, and the summary. Uh, which one would you like to do? Let me just uh, tell you a bit about the format of a debate. So a debate is a series of speeches. Um, each speech has a fixed maximum time. Um, first of all, there's a four speech. The first team gives their four speech. This is a chance to introduce the topic, maybe define any special words or special meanings of the words in the proposal, um, and basically give their reasons for supporting the proposal. Uh, next, there's a minute in which the against team can ask questions. This is mostly to check that they have heard the information in the first speech correctly. Um, next is the first against speech. Uh, this is also three minutes long. And this is a chance for the against team to give their reasons against the proposal. And then there's a, a minute for the four team to ask questions of the against team. Um, next, there is a minute of thinking time. This is a chance for both teams uh, to go back and discuss what they have heard in the first speech and get ready for the next speech, um, which is, uh, first of all, the against attack speech. Uh, this time you have two minutes. Then the for attack speech, again, two minutes. Uh, this is a chance for you to give counter arguments to the first speech, what you have heard in the first speech. Um, hopefully there'll be a short bit of thinking time after the attack speeches and time then next for the defence speech, the for speech first, followed by the against defence speech. Um, this time you have a minute and that's your chance to reply to the attack um, and explain why the attack is wrong and your first speech was right. And finally then, there is the summary. So first is the against team summary, which is two minutes, and then is the four team summary. Um, this is a chance to summarize what the other people have said, to put the whole debate together, put the arguments together, and explain why your side's arguments are stronger and why the other side's arguments are weaker. Um, next, the chief judge will take a vote and decide which team is the winner. So, um, questions then. Uh, first question, um, if you're the four team, how many of the four arguments uh, do you need to say? If you're the four team, and um, how many of the against arguments do you need to know? Um, next, if you're the against team, how many against arguments do you need to say in your speeches? And how many four arguments do you need to know? Um, please um, go away and think about those questions. Um, then we can watch more about 
preparing your speeches. Um, here are some questions for you to think about while you're preparing. Um, what are your best arguments? What is your support? Um, what arguments will the other team likely make? And how will you attack? How will they attack? How will you attack their arguments? How will they attack your arguments? Um, and you next need to work together. Uh, debating is a team activity, so you need to work together as a team. Uh, you need to organise your team, work out which proposal you're debating first, um, decide who will give the first speech, uh, who will attack the other team's speech, um, who will defend, and who will summarise. So within your team, you need to know who is doing what. And you should think about what you can prepare. So here are the four speeches. There's a first speech, the attack speech, the defense speech, and the summary. And um, how much can you prepare in each speech? Uh, please go and answer this question. And then um, let's look at some more questions. Um, first of all, then, which is easiest? So of these four speeches, which one do you think is easiest? Which one is most difficult? Um, what do you think will be easy and what will be difficult? Um, this may be an important question. You may only have three people in your team and four speeches. So if you have to give two speeches, if someone has to give two speeches, which two speeches should that person give? Probably not the two most difficult speeches. Possibly the two easiest speeches. Or, well, think about, you may have to think about this. So for the four speech then, the first four speech, this is what you need to do in the speech. You need to define the terms. So you may need to explain what the proposal means. If you're the four team, it's your proposal. You are proposing this. So you need to explain what it means. Um, you also need to maybe say why this proposal is important. If the proposal is not important, then probably you have lost. And uh, you need to come up with two arguments and uh, lots of support. Um, two arguments is probably enough. Um, you need support for your arguments. So in order to have enough time to support your arguments, you can't just give every argument that you know. You need to develop the arguments, give the arguments support. And I, I think around two arguments is the maximum that you can say in the given time. Two well-supported arguments. Um, here's a rough plan for your first speech. Um, so an introduction, then the first argument, first bit of support, second bit of support, then the second argument, and the first bit of support for the second argument, and the second piece of support for the second argument. Um, if you're giving the against first speech, um, then again, you need to give two arguments, and you need to give lots of support for those two arguments. Uh, when you're arguing against a proposal, um, these are the kind of things that you can think, um, maybe this is not necessary, maybe this has no effect, maybe it's not important, uh, maybe it's not unique, maybe the proposal is trying to fix a problem. If it's not a big problem, or if the problem has other causes, the proposal may not work. When you're speaking, then, please use um, signposts. Um, for example, first I'm going to talk about next. Another piece of support is um, I'm giving, I have uh, presentations here. I have uh, slides and points that you can read. A debate is basically spoken only. So in a debate, you stand up and you speak and people have to follow what you are saying. 
So in order to make it easy to follow what you're saying, help them structure. This is the first argument. This is the first piece of support. My next piece of support, use this kind of language and it will help people understand the structure of your debate speech. Um, it may be a good idea also to use short names for each argument. Um, each argument, of course, will appear in the first speech. The other team will attack your argument. Uh, then your team will defend against their attack. And probably both summaries will talk about each argument. So give your argument a name and then use the name when you're talking about your argument. Always um, simple English is best. So if you can find easy words, use easy words. If there's a difficult word which you find difficult, then the other team will find it difficult. The audience will find it difficult. And the audience is the judges. If the audience doesn't understand your speech, then you will not win. So keep it simple. Always keep it simple. Um, and also use support. So um, what kind of support is there? I think there were four different kinds of support. Can you remember what the different kinds of support were? And when you give support, um, you need to tell us four things about your support. What do you need to tell us about your support? So what is the support? And what do you need to tell us about your support? Um, so the four kinds of support are uh, data, example, expert opinion, and explanation. And when you're giving support, when you're giving a website, you need to give full information for your sources. So this means who, what, when, and where. So who said this? Who, who said your support? Uh, what exactly did they say? Uh, when did they say it? Can we have a date, a year, or a month? And where did they say it? Which website, which book, which publication, which newspaper? We need all this information when we're giving a source. So um, that's the uh, first speaker then. Um, so the first speaker, you need to think about what arguments, which two arguments you're going to use for your speech. And you need to have support. Um, if you don't have support, you may want to write some research questions and try and find more support. Uh, and this is a team, it's a team game, so please um, work together. Uh, the attack speaker, if you're the attack speaker, you need to think about the arguments that the other team will use and make a list of the possible arguments and think about each argument and how will you attack each argument. And can you find support for your attack? Here are some ideas about attacking, about how to attack an argument. And um, this is quite difficult. Uh, often you don't have much time. Uh, you need to listen carefully. You need to think quickly and you need to speak. Um, just like the real world. So um, often you can attack directly. Um, for example, you can attack the logic Maybe the argument is not logical. Maybe the argument is not true. Um, can you attack the logic? Can you attack the facts of the argument? Or it may be there are other indirect ways of attacking an argument. So it may be true, but maybe it's not always true. And it may be true, but perhaps there is no evidence or not enough evidence. And um, it may be true. But maybe it's not important. Uh, so these are different ways to attack. Um, there are often problems in logic, um, invalid assumptions I will come to in a moment. 
Um, often people mistake cause and effect. Uh, for example, um, playing basketball makes you taller. Look at all these basketball players. They're all very tall. Must be because playing basket makes you taller. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's the other way around. I think people who are tall are good at basketball. So um, cause and effect often are mistaken. Um, contradiction. So if you said, if you listen to, often people will say two different things. And if A is true, they said A and they said B. Um, if B is true, then A is not true. So listen carefully to what people say. They often contradict themselves. Um, this is an example. This is from a, the death penalty. Um, we should use the death penalty to discourage serial killers. Um, later on in this same speech, the debater said, um, serial killers are crazy psychopaths who do not care about living or dying. Wait a minute. If serial killers don't care about dying, why will they be discouraged by the death penalty? So listen carefully, listen to their arguments and try to find their contradictions. Uh, next, um, an important part of an argument is what's called the assumption. So an assumption is something that you believe to be true, usually without saying. So here are some arguments, again, about baseball. What are the assumptions behind these arguments? Um, baseball uses more skill. Soccer is better exercise than baseball. And baseball is more democratic. Um, the assumption behind the first one is that more skills is better. Um, the assumption behind the second one is that exercise is good. And the third one is that democracy is good. Um, so can you attack these assumptions? If you can attack the assumptions, then you can attack the arguments.